via inspections election form. If you are a selling agent, you need to know what inspections to recommend to your buyer. How does your buyer know what inspections to do unless you are the professional you're supposed to recommend, right? So what you need to do is to explain to your buyer what each type of possible inspection the buyer may do. The more inspections the buyer do, the more money the buyer has to spend. So most of the time, we just recommend the basic general inspection. Now what uh, other inspections you need to do will depend on what kind of property you have. The form says importance of property investigation. And this is what the form says. Unless otherwise specified in the agreement, the physical condition of the land and improvement being purchased is not guaranteed by either seller or broker. A broker's inspection is limited visual inspection. A broker is not qualified to conduct the inspections listed below. Nor will the broker conduct these inspections checked by the buyer. For this reason, you should conduct thorough inspections, investigations, tests, surveys, and other studies, parenthesis, inspections of the property personally and with appropriate professionals, parenthesis, C, car form, BIA, and SBSA. Who should provide written reports of their inspections? The general fiscal inspection typically does not cover all aspects of the property, nor items affecting the property that are not physically located on the property. If any professional recommends any further inspections, including a Recommendation by a pest control operator to inspect inaccessible areas of the property. You should con contact qualified experts to conduct such additional inspections. All right, let's keep quiet so I can explain to you what this means. This is basically telling the buyer that, you know, don't rely on the seller or the buyer to be 100% aware of anything that you could find wrong about the property. The sellers and the buyers are not professionals. No, the seller and the brokers are not professionals. The brokers are only required to do limited visual inspection. What that means is they are only required to do a a casual walk through around the property. In other words, they are not required to climb to the roof, to go down to places where it's not accessible to do the inspection for you. Those areas are to be inspected by the professional. If you buy this property, you have the right to hire the right professionals to do the inspections for you. B, buyer's rights and duties. You have an affirmative duty to exercise reasonable care to protect yourself, including discovery of the legal, practical, and technical implications of disclosed facts, and to investigate and verify information and facts that you know or that are within your diligent attention and observation. So as, your, as a buyer, you have an obligation to take reasonable care to protect yourself. That means that 
you have to consult a lawyer regarding all legal matters and you have to consult the professionals concerning the technical aspects of discovered facts. The agreement gives you the right to investigate the property. If you exercise this right, and you should, you must do so in accordance with the term of this agreement. So basically letting the buyer know that they have the right to do inspection. This is the best way for you to protect yourself. It is extremely important for you to read all written reports provided by professionals and to discuss the results of inspections with the professional who conducted the inspection. So basically, you know, the association uh, put together this form uh, once again to protect the agents because we don't want the buyer coming back finding out there was something that they could have discovered by hiring the right professional and they didn't do it because they chose not to do it. Not because you did not recommend it, they chose not to do it. Now if they chose not to do it, it will show up on this form right here because the buyer is supposed to sign this form. Now if you look at the form, there are 37 types of uh, investigation that the buyer can do. Which is the most common one? The most common one is the first one, the general home inspection. So you basically let the, the buyer know that uh, for certain situations, you will recommend to the buyer, say that, okay, you know what? I, I think you should do general home inspection. That is like the minimum. So if you choose to do general home inspection, check yes right here, okay? Check yes. I don't know why it's uh, it's blacked out, but you're supposed to, I know why, because you know why, you don't want the buyer to e-sign this. You're supposed to print this out and have the buyer put check mark on this one here, okay? Now, actually, if you give this form to the buyer, if the buyer signs the form, and return to you and everything is blank, you would have fulfilled your obligation already. Even if the buyer did not uh, <clears throat> put the appropriate uh, uh, check boxes. Because by indicating here what inspections they plan on doing, they, they basically said, these are the only inspections I'm going to do. So if I waive, if I remove the inspection contingency, I, I would have uh, satisfied myself with these inspections already. Okay, so this is actually something else that protect the agent. Now, if you give a, uh, the buyer this form, they really don't know what to sign. They don't, they don't know which uh, check boxes to, to check. So they'll probably ask you a question, well, you know what, Kenny, uh, you know, I got so many different, different inspection rights. Uh, which one is uh, one that I should do? Now, as a professional, you will, you will actually exercise your expertise and advise the buyer. You say most buyer will do number one. So put a check box here indicating you're going to do this uh, general home inspection. Now, would destroying pass is termite? As a buyer, you have the right to do termite. But if you do termite, that's an additional inspection report that you have to pay. Okay, do you want to do termite? I would recommend you do it if it's a uh, a very old home. If it's a brand new home, uh, you really don't need a termite report if it's a brand new home, okay? But the choice is yours. If you want to do it, put a check mark here next to number two, okay? Now, sometimes they're asking, well, Kenny, should I do it or should I not do it? You just basically say, if it's a brand new home, Really, it's not that necessary. But if it's a very old home, you should do it for sure, okay? Now, somewhere in between, it's your call, it's your money. If you want to do it, you have the uh, right to do it. So you want to do it or not? He says, uh, you know what, maybe I'll skip this one. And he, then make sure he checks no on the uh, termite, right? But frankly, I mean, it's hard to go through all of these things. It takes a lot of work, right? So, 
it's not required by law that you do it, but there are some more and more escrows are requiring that you do it. Okay, I don't require you to do it because the law does not require that you do it. Now you might ask, if law does not require that you do it, why did they create this form? Well, they create this form to protect the agents because if the buyer check the boxes and then later on waive the contingency or remove contingency, he can't come back to you and say, well, Kenny, I have something else I was supposed to inspect. I didn't do it yet. What is that? Oh, uh, radon gas. Okay, I wanted to check for radon gas. You know, in an average transaction, we don't do radon gas, right? So you can basically tell them that most buyers do not do it, but if you want to do it, you can do it. Okay, do you want to do it or not? Okay, now if you ask me, okay, my recommendation is uh, if uh, in certain parts of the country, there's radon gas issue where most people will do it, then you do it, but most people don't do it. You just tell them most people don't do it, okay? So it's protected to selling agent or protected listing agent? Actually, it's protecting the uh, selling agent. It's actually protecting the selling agent. You can say you also protect the uh, listing agent. Now, as far as chimney goes, if it doesn't have a chimney, then your recommendation is to check no because it has no chimney, right? But chimney, if you do a special inspection on chimney, that costs money too. See, when you place an inspection order, sometimes the inspector will ask you, well, what do you want to include in the inspection? So if your buyer also wants to check the chimney, tell him that there'll be extra cost for that, okay? And uh, if he wants to do chimney, check yes. If he doesn't want to know, do chimney, check no. Same thing with electrical. Now, you go through this process. You ask him, uh, you know, do you want to do an electrical uh, inspection? If you want to do electrical inspection, you have to hire an electrical uh, contractor to do it for you, or you may hire a home guard and say, I want to do electrical too. Uh, the, you will check with home guard. You guys do specially for electrical if they do. Your buyer wants to spend extra money, let them spend the extra money and check yes, right? But that's their choice though. I mean, both by, by the time you add up all these costs, they say, wow, that's too much. And you ask, well, well, what does an average buyer do? An average buyer will just do the general home inspection, okay? Okay, then they'll probably just offer the general home inspection, all right? Now, heating and air conditioning, most of the time, is included in the uh, general inspection already. So they'll probably check yes. Okay, let them check yes. Let paint. Now, lead paint, usually you just tell them, you know, you, most people do not test for uh, lead in, in paint, okay? Now, uh, the only time people might do it is because uh, they have children at home, they might want to do it. But honestly, uh, it's, it's almost never done, okay? Plumbing, you know, the kind of uh, plumbing uh, inspection that you get from a home guard, uh, it's very general. They don't go behind the wall, right? So generally, the general home inspection actually, if you tell the buyer what the general home inspection cover, it covers electrical, it covers plumbing, right? And then it covers uh, the roof. No, actually, it's not, it, oftentimes it doesn't cover the roof. If you want to do roof, roof inspection, there's a separate charge for that. Pretty much free. Yeah, sometimes they break it down, sometimes they don't, okay? So you basically go through this, for example, square footage. You basically tell the uh, buyer that normally the square footage that is provided in the MLS is just an approximation. They don't guarantee that that's the right number. If you want to do it, usually the appraiser will do it. The appraiser will put it in the appraisal report already. So uh, people just don't hire a surveyor, pay separately for a surveyor to do a square footage uh, analysis, usually it's included in the appraisal report already, okay? Now structural, you will, you will advise the buyer to do a structural inspection when there is a distressed property like a foundation problem, uh, advise them to do a structural. 
And if they check yes, okay, they're gonna do it. If they check no, they won't do it. Now, what if they check yes, they don't do it, and then they remove contingency? That means that they waive the structural inspection when they remove contingency, even though they indicated here that they wanted to do structural inspection, right? Now, as far as uh, easement and encroachment, now if there's an easement on the property, or if there's a possible encroachment, usually the kind of professional they will need is a surveyor, okay? Uh, usually I just tell them where the easement is at, and then I explain to them what kind of easement that is. And if it's like, it doesn't significantly affect the use of the property, I basically tell them, okay, the easement is about three feet wide, about 20 feet long, okay? Are you okay with it? If you're okay with it, then fine. Okay, now whenever you have easement on the premium title report, I would recommend that you let your buyer know. Because, uh, you know, if you don't let them know, they might sue you, even though you might win the lawsuit, uh, you still have to spend the time defending the lawsuit. So it's better to kind of tell them there's an easement on the property. It's about whatever the width is, whatever the length is, and whatever the location is. Tell them roughly where the location is. But if you want a more definitive answer, my recommendation is you, you pay a surveyor to do it. Now, if he checks yes on the easement encroachment and doesn't do the work, that's his choice. We gave him the advice already, right? Foundation or slab, you normally don't recommend doing any foundation or slab testing unless there is suspicion that foundation or slab is uh, is defective, that's an issue. Now, the lot size, you know, if your buyer is very concerned about the lot size, they can have a surveyor do it, but it's their choice. So you just explain to them, okay, you have a choice to do it or not to do it, so what's your choice? Okay, he said do it, or he said doesn't do it now. The difficult thing is sometimes they, they, they turn around and ask you, well, really, what do you think? Should I do the lot size uh, investigation or should I just take the seller's, take the uh, assessor's uh, record for it, right? So you say, that's totally up to you. You know, even though uh, in many instances, the, uh, the, the assessor's uh, information is accurate, or it's only a small percentage of the time is wrong. So can you live with that risk? If you can't, you don't have to do it. But if you can't live with that risk, then you can pay a surveyor to do it. Of course, that will cost extra money. You want to spend the extra money? They'll probably think about it and say, you know what, never mind, Kenny. Uh, I'll check no on this one. But okay? Do you, uh, you use to tell us there's two kinds of insurance. One is regular standard insurance. One is ALTA. Yeah, if you get the ALTA, you don't have to yeah. uh, to, to pay extra. I mean, uh, I mean, you you pay extra for the premium, mm -hmm. but you don't have to to hire a professional to do it. It's already included in your policy, so you don't have to 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 do it if you have an ALTA. So, from my understanding, if your house is on a, a slope, like a, on a mountain or curb, or with some naval boundary, and it uh, looks like uh, there's common error, it's better to buy the ALTA. Otherwise, like a regular single family house, flat. Nothing like bonnets, uh, well, the right? the ALTA does not pro protect, uh, does not ensure the accuracy of the lot size. It will only defend you for boundary dispute. If there's a wrong size, you can't go to the insurance company and say the wrong size, the, the lot size is wrong. Mm -hmm. No, no coverage there. But it will defend you against any boundary line dispute for ALTA, not for any inaccuracy in the lot size. Oh. If you want to, to confirm you have the right lot size, mm -hmm. you can either measure it yourself yeah. or hire a professional to do it. It's your choice, okay? You can check yes or no, that's up to you. Remember, I'm just telling you mm -hmm. what options you have. I don't, I'm not responsible for the cost of this investigation, yeah. you are, okay? Boundaries, we talked about that, right? Pool and spa. You know, most uh, home inspection, you can actually include pool and spa. So if the buyer wants to inspect the pool, he'll check yes, okay? 
So you can explain to the buyer that if you if you order this package, you already includes the pool and spa. Sewer home inspection don't cover sewer. You know, if you have like a sewer lateral, if like in Oakland, Berkeley, you know, in that area, you need to explain to the buyer that the seller will provide the sewer lateral certificate. Okay. So that's already something paid for by the seller. So you don't really have to do it unless you really want to do uh, more inspection. Septic system. But that's totally up to you. Septic system. If the house has no septic system, then there's really nothing to inspect. So, you know, uh, the answer will be no on this. But that's totally up to you. If you hire a septic yes. system company, say, hey, I want to do a septic system uh, investigation or inspection. You say, well, you know, I just checked. You have no septic system on your property, okay? So in this case, uh, if there's no septic system, uh, chances are uh, the checkbox will be no on this one. Soil stability, you know, uh, if it's on a hillside and if you're seeing uh, visible signs of uh, cracks on the structure of the property, you know, that's an, an, a, an issue that might be related to soils. And we don't know until the report is done. But that's totally up to you because uh, it may cost you $3,000 for the uh, report. By the time you add up all of these reports, it could be very costly. But that's, that's totally up to you. If you're buying a $10 million home that is sitting on a hillside, do you care about spending 10000 to do a source report, maybe maybe you want to spend that money if you're buying $10 million home, right? right? Survey, if you are that concerned about the actual uh, property line, you want to order a survey report, but that's totally up to you. That costs extra. If you want to do it, check yes. If you don't want to do it, check no, okay? All right. Next, tree and arbor is you know some some trees are actually protected uh, species. If you buy a piece of land, there are a couple of oak trees on the property, vacant land. Shouldn't you hire a tree expert to find out if this is protected? Can you actually chop it down? Yeah, so I mean. That's a question for the tree expert, not for us. We are only a realtor. We have no knowledge in this area. You want to spend money to hire a tree expert or you're okay not doing it, but that's totally your choice, okay? Well, if you're buying a uh, agricultural land, uh, do you need to have the well tested? Do you need to use the land or are you going to close the, the well? If you have future plan to use the well, shouldn't you have the well tested? Check for the water, right? You need an expert for that, okay? Now, he might ask you, well, Kenny, uh, can you recommend one? Okay, you know, uh, I don't know one, but I can find out, okay? Uh, who inspects well in this area? We'll just hire the same people that inspected the well before. Most likely, you can check with the seller. Okay, seller, who did you hire to inspect the well? Water systems and components. Uh, if, uh, you know, you rely heavily on the water system, and maybe you ought to have uh, somebody do the inspection for you, okay? Uh, you want to do it or not? Just check yes or no. Radon gas. There are companies that actually test for radon gas. You can... Remember, it says here, buyer inspection election. Buyer represents and agrees that buyer has independently consi uh, considered the available inspections and that this time has decided to order only those inspections selected. Yes, below. So this is actually binding on the buyers because if they decided to check no, uh, then they cannot come back and say, well, how come you didn't... Uh, Tell me about it. Well, I did tell you about it. You just decided to check no. Okay. 
if you check yes and you don't do it and then you remove your contingency, that that's a decision you make. It has uh, nothing to do with me not going to perform with you. Okay. But frankly, uh, only in some situation, some escrow actually are starting to use this form now. So you might as well be familiar with this form. Now, the other day we had a transaction, actually, we were told to uh, have this form completed by the buyer. So I basically told the escrow, I said, my brokerage firm does not require it. Okay. Now, the reason why I did that is because uh, by the time my agent found out about this form, they've already removed contingency. If they already remove contingency, what's the point of filling out this form? <laughs> I'll just I'll just basically say we don't need this form because I don't need it to close. But as you can see, it's an extra form to protect the agent. If you want to use it, great. If you don't want to use it, uh, there's no law that requires that you use it. Okay, so just be aware of it. Some escrow might ask you for this form. There are some escrow that actually will require it, but you just explain to them that my broker does not require it, okay? It's not required by law. It's just good to have, okay? Formaldehyde, you know, nobody check for formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is just a type of chemical that you use on your furniture uh, that makes it easy to wipe your furniture in case uh, liquid on your furniture. That's what formaldehyde does. Okay. Now you want to check for formaldehyde in the household? That's totally up to you. Okay. I mean, you need to look for a formaldehyde expert. Most people don't check. If the uh, uh, buyer asks you about your experience, you can always share with them. Most buyers don't don't do that. But if you want to do it, you know, you have the right to do it. Man, thing gets the same thing. Most buyers do not check for methane gas. Why would you check for methane gas when there's no risk of having any methane gas on the property? The only time you check for methane gas is, uh, for example, uh, you're on a piece of property that's methane gas. Methane gas come from where? From, from uh, household waste. Household waste will create the methane gas. Huh? Asbestos. Well, if your property has asbestos, like popcorn ceiling, sometimes they have asbestos, you always recommend, okay, that they do asbestos testing. Now, they may say, how costly is it? You just say, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand. Okay. I don't know. You can ask, okay? But there's company out there that can actually do the testing for you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mole. Now, this is one I, if I see mole on the property, I insist that they get a mole expert to check out the mold. I will recommend you put a checkbox over here on mold because uh, that's one that you must do if there's mold on the property, okay? You just recommend that he check yes, and if ultimately he found out it's too expensive, he doesn't want to do it, it's not your fault. He chose not to do it, right? Okay. Public records. Now, agents are not required to go to public records to check if something is permitted or not. Okay. Now, that is something that if they want to do, there are companies out there that can actually provide permits or give you copies of the permits. Zoning, public records and zoning. Now, zoning is something that... Uh, if they want to check yes, they want to satisfy themselves for zoning, you can tell them that the way to check for zoning is to go to the uh, city hall, city planner. Now, you, the agent, if they say, hey, can you check it for me? Now, you got, a, you, got, you, you got a customer who's asking you to check it for them. 
Now that is a very uh, sort of a difficult decision to make. If you go check it for them, it turns out you're wrong, you're liable. If you don't check it for them, you decline it, you're not liable. You might not think of you as an agent who provides good service, but you're not liable for saying, no, I, my broker would not allow me, or my, our insurance company would not allow us. Okay? Always blame it on the insurance company. There's already on the, on the website, you can check on right? the Yeah, you can say that you can go to uh, the city's website to check, or you can go to... Uh, Modern, yeah, yeah they, they have it, okay? So if you want to check, if you want to put it as one of the items, you're going to hire uh, somebody to do it for you, you can always put a yes here, okay? But you're not required to, you can put a no if you don't want to do the checking. Um, one more question, go back to that, public cost. What kind of public cost you can find for them? Permits, about permits. Oh. I, I usually do, would not do it for them. I would rather accompany them to the city. Oh. That way, you know, you can act as a translator if you have to, and you can ask the city in front of them. Okay. Oh. Now they have uh, four bedrooms here. Can you please check to see how many bedrooms are permitted? Sometimes the city will just print out something. You offer to take them there, but if they say no, you've already offered. Okay. But if they say can you do it for me? You just say your broker will not allow it for, for, for liability reason. But if you want me to accompany you there, my broker will allow me to accompany you there. And then we can both ask the city the same question. You are not declining service. You are offering the service. They say no, right? But if they are asking you to take all the responsibility, I say no. So either your customers say no or I say no. Okay? I say yes if you accompany your customer to go to the city hall. Okay? All right? Don't say I'll do it for you. You do it at your own risk if you say I'll do it for you. If you turns out to give wrong information, then uh, you are liable. Right? Yeah. yeah. By the way, the zoning is always showing the, the first amount of time that when he, the app you give us, and then from here, RDK or whatever. You can say this is what first American title shows, mm -hmm. and then you can say I don't know how they got their record, okay. but this is what they show. Okay. I didn't get the record, but they got it, right? Uh -huh. Okay. So if you want to be sure, you can always go to the city. I'll be more than happy to accompany you to the city. Uh -huh. Do you need to go to the city or not? Right? If they say no, I accept first American's information. Okay, fine. Okay. Right? If they say why don't you go and find out for me? Oh, my broker would not allow me to do that. Okay? All right. Uh, same thing with zoning, though. You know, you can always go to the city and verify. I'll go with you. We'll drive there together, right? But my broker would not allow me to go to the counter, get it for you, and then tell you what it is. Okay? You're not declining service. You are offering service which they decline. Okay? All right, government requirements, same thing. If they want to know what the fire department requirement is, hey, I'm more than happy to accompany you to go to the fire department to confirm. Same thing, I'm more than happy to accompany you to uh, this uh, planning office to confirm. Would you like me to go with you or you want to do it yourself? If they say, hey, why don't you do it for me? Say, unfortunately, my broker will not allow me to do it that way, okay? All right. Now, vacant land construction financing. Uh, usually, you you get a builder or an architect to get this information for you. Would you like me to accompany you to consult an architect? I'm more than happy to do it with you. If they say, well, May, why don't you go uh, talk to an architect and let me know what the guy says. My broker would not allow me to do that for you, but I'm more than happy to take you with the, uh, to to, to oh, take you yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. It's better that way. It's always better that way. Okay. Construction cost same thing, same issue. You can either consult an architect, or you can consult a builder on the construction cost, or a contractor. 
Okay. Now, would you like me to take you to see a general contractor? I know of a general contractor. Environmental survey. Now, uh, they are provided by consulting company. Would you like me to consult, to uh, put you in touch with a environmental consultant? You can enter into a contract with him if you want to do environmental report. You know, most people don't do an uh, environmental survey for uh, residential, but for commercial, always recommended. Always mm -hmm. recommended for commercial. Uh, especially if you use uh, for businesses that might create contaminants like a gas station, dry cleaners. Okay. Now, if it is a, you know, a new office building, then you don't need to do environmental survey because you know what? Chances are, it has been done already. So, what basically my advice is to get the reports from the seller and provide the reports to the buyer. Okay. Now, if the seller have no report, and if it's an industrial building, always recommend doing environmental reports. Okay. Plus, the lender will need it. Will need it anyway if you're getting a loan. The lender will need you to do a phase one environmental uh, site assessment report. Okay. Natural hazard report. That one is easy. You always say yes on that one, right? Because it's mandatory. It's required by law, right? Okay. Subdivision of property. Uh, most of the time, it's on the subdivision of property you can deal with it this way. You don't need to get a report. All you need to do is to accompany the buyer to go to the city if there's any subdivision concern. If there's no subdivision concern like a single family residence, you don't need to take the buyer to, you can actually check no on this one if it's a single family residence. Okay, now if, you, if you're buying a subdiv subdivider property, you want to know uh, the status. Uh, you know, you you want to know the status of the subdivision. The the best place to go is to go to the the, the planning department. If any subdivision questions, I'll take you to the planning department. We will both ask questions together, okay, and let the city official answer your question. <coughs> if the if the buyers say, well, can you do it for me? My broker would not allow me to do it, okay. Just put it that way. Always blame it on me. It's easier for you. If you say I won't do it, it sounds funny. If you say your broker will not allow it, it's easier. Right? Yeah. It's not that I don't want to help you. My broker will not allow it. They might say, why won't your broker allow it? Oh, insurance reason. Insurance is reason. Insurance uh, company don't allow it. Okay. Just tell them that way. Okay. All right, so we're done with the buyer's inspection election, okay? So next time, if you ever ask about this form, if you want to use this form, that's fine. But use it early, because once the buyer removes contingencies, it's too late to use this form. This form should be used in the beginning. They send it to you, right? Because they want you to go over this form with your buyer. Yeah, I just marked whatever the my buyer did or buyer have form touch on it. Okay. Yeah, I just marked whatever the my buyer did or buyer have form touch on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think this thing is give it to you, right? Mm -hmm. So you just put down whatever that the buyer did already, right? Yeah, I think that's that's okay too. So if the listing agent has to do any inspection, no, then you do your own. If the listing agent has no inspections done, you ask your buyer to pay for it. Okay. But again, if it's already removed, the contingency, there's no need to, to do it. I think this is this form is basically to protect all the agents. Okay. Yeah, to protect all the agents. So if the buyer done okay general home inspection, you will check check yes, and then whatever the buyer did not check, okay, uh, yes. I would just say, well, you didn't check yes on this one. 
That means you didn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you didn't do it, shouldn't you check no? So check no. Check no or no. Just leave a blank. Can we just like for like one, two? I suppose if you leave it blank, that's okay too. Why? Basically, he checked everything that he did, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the one he didn't do, he just left it blank. Yeah. Okay. And it's protect to us, the agent. Yeah, it's actually protect you. Okay. It's actually simplify your work. Okay. So this is a 2013 form. Uh, we just don't use it enough. Although uh, more and more listing agents are using that form, okay? All right, that's it. Thank you so much.